Hello everybody, welcome back if you are a returning viewer or welcome if you are new. As always, my name is Addie and this is the Knits by AJ Knitting Podcast and this is episode 24. Um, I have got a fair few things to chat through today. I've got two finished objects and then I've got one, two, three, four whips to talk about. Um, two of which are new cast-ons. Um, but yes, as always, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Knits by AJ. I will put both handles up here in case you want to catch up with me between podcasts. Um, but yeah, let's, I hope you've all had a lovely week and let's get into some knitting. So I have two finished objects this week and both of them are from the same pattern, essentially. So I have finished my December bows. And so I I think I had only cast on one last week, actually, having said this. So I have finished two of them. So this is my daughter's one in this wonderful pink. So this is a pattern by Petite Knit. And I used, for this one, Phil Kalana Saga and Phil Kalana Tilia in the colours Peach Blossom. And... I used a three millimetre needle, whereas the pattern, I believe, suggests a 3.5. And I thought that I was going to be knitting this so that it was going to be a little bit smaller than the pattern suggests, but it, it turned out to be exactly the same. I didn't gauge swatch. Um, I kind of didn't really see the point in gauge swatching for something so kind of like it's not a garment, so it didn't really matter if it was going to fit. But obviously, if I had gauge swatched, then I would have known that I would have gone. I would have had to have gone down even more needle sizes. But to be honest, I got a fabric that I like. This is kind of like sturdy enough that it stays put. It's not gonna sort of flop about. Um, but it's not heavy. Um, like it still does have some kind of like maneuverability. It's not stiff. Um, so yeah, I used one strand of Tilia and one strand of Saga held together, and it just looks like. This, this colour, it never looks right on camera. So to me, it is much more of kind of like a blue toned pink, but on camera, it seems much more kind of ready toned. Um, but yeah, it is, I mean, it is what it is really, isn't it? Um, so I ended up using 10 grams of the Tilia and 14 grams of the Saga to knit this. Um, so I still have loads that left over because I had about 50, no, 25 grams of the Saga and 25. I had a full ball, full 25 gram ball of um, the Tilia as well. So next to no yarn to knit this. And yeah, so the pattern essentially you would have seen last week, you kind of knit like a, like a garter rectangle really with some tapering at either ends. And then the pattern has instructions on how to kind of fold and then sew together the bow to create this shape and then you have a double knit kind of band in the middle that you then kind of tie around it and sew together and the pattern has so the pattern has instructions for that both written instructions and like drawn diagrams I did not use the um written instructions once I only used the drawn diagrams but I found them really really useful I found it really easy to follow and I think the idea of the fact that you have to like sew this together to create this shape is a lot more scary than actually doing it it's really really simple and like yeah if that's the thing that's putting you off then don't worry about it because it's really easy to do um so yeah I I think the the pattern does actually sort of suggest like putting a loop around it. I think, I believe I've seen it so that people have done it as like a, either a Christmas decoration or something to like hang on a door or whatever. Um, but I decided to put a hair clip in the back. And so I just used one of these like crocodile style hair clips because I thought that it would be a better way to kind of like keep it in my daughter's hair. And then I can put like a hairband in and then just clip the bow in on top. Um, because I have knit her a um, Augustine's number 22, which is this one, which is the other like big hair bow pattern. And um, I knit this out of Double Sunday from Sandler's Garn and this is so heavy and I put a hairband on it and it just kind of like flops off her, 
off the back of her head and it's really hard to kind of keep it in place and get it to to sit where I want it to sit with a hairband I think putting a hair clip in it is much more kind of easy to use um, and much more versatile than putting in a hairband so yeah would definitely recommend these kind of like crocodile style <laughs> crocodile style like style clips um in the back of them and this holds it up really really well this didn't fall out of her hair once we went to a christening yesterday and she wore this and yeah it didn't bother her it wasn't pulling on the back of her head or anything um and yeah really really happy with how it turned out and now she wants to wear it every day I had to kind of like say no you can't wear it to nursery today because I need it so yes I made her one and um I'll do the kind of general breakdown I cast this on on May the 24th and I cast it off on May the 28th so this took me a grand total of four days I didn't do any blocking on this so there's none of that kind of like taken into account and yeah I just pretty much like cast it on and knit it all up and I think I put it down for a couple of days and then so did the button not the button band the um double knit band and then sewed it all together but yeah that is my first finished object she's really happy with it I'm definitely going to make more of these as well as you will see from my second finished object which is another December bow <laughs> so this is one that I knit for myself um, I also wore this to the christening that we went to yesterday and then I will be wearing this to a wedding that we're going to at the beginning of next month and so this is in uh, I knit this up in drops brushed alpaca yeah drops brushed alpaca silk in the color steel blue I had this left over from a cardigan I had the pinks left over from a scarf and a t-shirt that I knit so these were all made of scraps which is great because I'm trying to clear out some of my like odd balls this year um and I used the same needles I say I used the three millimeter for the main fabric and then I used the 2.5 millimeter for the double knit band in the middle I knit it completely to pattern essentially um apart from the fact that I changed my needle size I had realized by the point that I was knitting this one that they were coming out the same size as the pattern suggested so yeah this is essentially knit completely to pattern however I was playing major yarn chicken with this one so I did have to block this kind of midway through I had one full ball of the brushed alpaca silk brushed alpaca silk um and so I started I cast on did my increases and then I essentially just knit to the end of that ball and then I had like a little scrap left over as well in a swatch um, and so I got to the end of the ball, I blocked it, luckily I'd managed to get the full length of where you need to get to before you then start your decreases with that one ball, and then I had to pull out my swatch that I had initially knit up in this and use that to do the decreases and also the um, double knit band in the middle, which is why this one looks a little bit more kind of like rough and ready, I'm not really all that bothered by it because it's a really fluffy yarn anyway, you don't get anywhere near the definition on this one yeah if I hold them up together so yeah you don't get anywhere near as much definition like stitch definition on this one as you do on this one but I'm okay with that because it's, it's just supposed to be like a fluffy hair bow really isn't it it's not like it's a, a garment that I'm gonna sit and wear multiple times and and to be honest because I wear this on the back of my head I can't even see it so I'm not really all that fussed um so yeah because I had blocked sort of three two thirds of it I then had to block the other end as well so this one took much more time to knit uh, much more time in blocking than it did actually to knit but it's worked out perfectly fine it's still the same size as this one roughly I think this one has actually turned out a little bit bigger because the because I was holding the brushed alpaca silk double on this it made a bit more of a, a difference to my gauge in the fact that I it was a lot wider like the this section is a lot wider than um, when I was holding one strand of wool and one strand of mohair but again doesn't really bother me because this goes on my head and this one goes on my daughter's and obviously she has a smaller head than me so actually probably worked out for the best um, I once again added the like crocodile style clip on the back to attach it 
and I do kind of like a half up half down and then pop this in the back um, in front of the hairband that I put in to hold it in place and yeah it worked out really nicely I think I've got a photo of them in the back of our like on the back of our heads I'll pop that in here um, to roughly show kind of like what they look like um so I cast this one on on May the 29th and I cast it off on June the 1st so this took a grand total of four days as well so both took me four days to knit and the cost breakdowns so I'll do the pink one first so the pattern cost £3.59 the Fulcalan Atelier cost £8 for one ball um, the Fulcalana Saga cost £5.95 per ball although I didn't use very much obviously if you were going to knit these you would need a whole ball for me it was kind of free because they were scrap yarns anyway um, the hair clips that I bought I bought a pack of six and it cost me about eight pounds for those um, and then so that makes the grand total for this one 25 pounds and 54 pence to me it kind of only really cost like the cost of the pattern plus the hair clips because I had the yarn in stash that I'd already used up for another another project two projects in this case so not really that much for me but if you were to knit this not having already purchased the yarn or really already used it then it is a little bit pricey like 25 pounds 25 pound 54 for a hair bow quite pricey this one on the other hand so I obviously paid £3.59 for the pattern the yarn for two balls of the brush to alpaca silk because that is what you will need essentially um, if you are going to hold it double so for two balls of that at £2.90 a ball is £5.80 for the yarn obviously the hair clips cost me £8 you may be able to find them cheaper I just went into my, my local town and found them in like Claire's accessories which is where I would essentially go for hair clips because that's just what they do you might be able to find them cheaper somewhere else but I paid eight pounds for them um so that makes the total for this one 17 pounds 39 which is still a little bit pricey but if you are going to knit it out of your stash and you've just got the yarn sitting there then it is great for just using up the odd ball that you have lying around and they are super duper cute um, I already have plans to make another one for my daughter, a white one, because she is going to be flower girl at a wedding next month. And alongside her, the other flower girl is my sister, so I will be making one for her as well so that they can match. Um, and I will be wearing this one. So we will all be super cute in our matching bows. But um, yeah, I think the pattern's really versatile. I'm considering even making a couple for my Christmas tree. Um, and I think you could even like knit it at a smaller gauge just with a strand of mohair. I think that'd be really cute. So yeah, I can definitely recommend the pattern. It was a, it was well worth the three pound fifty nine that I paid for it. And to be honest, if I'm gonna knit four, then if I just do some quick maths, then yeah, if I'm definitely gonna be knitting four, then that sort of makes this pattern eighty nine p per item. If I only make four. If I make more, obviously it's going to lessen the price even more. So I think actually I'm getting quite good value for money with it. So yeah, those are my December bows that I have waffled on for too long about. And let's move into some whips. So I will do them from now, like going forward, I think it's probably best if I just do them in order of how long they've been on my needles. So I will start off with the colour tip tea that I am making for my husband. Now last week this didn't get any um didn't get any work put in on it but this week I've been I've done quite a lot actually on it this week. So last week when I showed this and the week before I had done the back panel and not really done anything else. So this is a pattern by Emily Curtis um, I'm knitting it up in Sandler's Garn Tin Pier Gint in the colour 1042, which is this kind of like lovely kind of mottled grey. Um, it's, yeah, it's almost kind of like a melange type colour. There's definitely like much darker spots and lighter spots. Um, 
So yeah, I really like this yarn. I have knit with it before. I really, really like using it. And so here I am again. And I also feel like I need to knit things for my husband in slightly more sturdy yarns. I knit him a hoodie a little while ago, not the one that I showed on the podcast. This was one that I knit for him before and um, had to put some elbow patches in it because he had managed to make holes in the elbows just by sort of how often he had been wearing it and sitting at his desk and everything. So I need to use sturdier yarns for him so that things last longer because he does love to wear his knitted garments. Last time I showed this, I had finished knitting the back panel um, and I had picked up the stitches but not really done any knitting on the front. And now I have finished the front. So obviously because this is stockinette, it's just gonna curl massively. How can I show this? Ooh. Possibly like this, if I move all the way over here. So yeah, I have finished the front and I have done even done the increases for the armhole on the front. So that's just like this. And I am at the point now where I am about to join in the round for the body. And so I'm knitting this in a size that doesn't exist, essentially. Because this pattern is intended for women's sizing and it has been written using women's size charts. Chance? Charts. Um, it doesn't really kind of accommodate for, and because it's a satin sleeve as well, it doesn't really accommodate for men's shoulders. So I have kind of taken my husband's shoulder measurements and then picked a size based on that, taken his preferred yoke depth, picked a size based on that. And then I chose the size that would give me the right amount of stitches that I needed before doing the increases for the armhole for the neck. And then I will be knitting the like chest circumference that he prefers for his chest circumference of his jumpers. So that works out as size seven for the shoulders size eight for the yoke depth, size five for the neck, and size three for the chest circumference. So it's a bit of a, it's a mishmash of sizes here, but that's one of the things that I really love about knitting, the fact that I can kind of take a pattern that I've already got and make it work. Um, and this pattern also does come with a hacking guide, which kind of, it doesn't hold your hand through doing alterations like this, but it does kind of help. Um, and give you some kind of basic ideas of where you need to kind of go to add in any extra, like change any of the measurements and things. So yeah, I think I've got a couple more rows on the front and then I will be joining in the round. And yeah, I think it's going really smoothly. I have tried been trying this on my husband at any kind of point that I can. Um, I've taken to just knitting this in the evenings when he's there so I can just pop it over his head and get him to try it on and um, try it on tubing has definitely been my best friend in this um, so yeah it's kind of just after the kind of like I think it's about six rows that I've got to do before I can join it in the round then it's just going to be easy breezy knitting in the round I might cast on a couple of stitches under the underarm which will alter my stitch count so it won't necessarily be size three for the chest but yeah I'm just kind of seeing how it goes and then sort of altering it where I need to to fit him and I'm trying to make as many notes as I can in case I want to knit another one of these and then I can just follow my own instructions um, or if any of you want to knit one of these for your for the, any of the men in your life or if you've got broader shoulders but not as much chest or anything, then um, maybe this might help somebody. But the yarn is working out really nicely. It's a little bit uneven in places, um, but I know that that blocks out really well. Um, and yeah, just kind of carrying on with this. It's going much quicker than I initially expected it to. Um, I thought a fingering weight jumper for my husband was going to take absolutely forever but I'm really enjoying working on it and so it doesn't really feel like it's going to be taking that long. That was a really odd way of saying that. I don't feel like it's going to take that long to kind of get off my needles. Um, so yeah, 
my next plan is to obviously join in the round and then I will knit to the end of the ball of yarn that I'm on at the moment. So this is the second ball. Um, so yeah, not eating too much yarn really either. So yeah, this is ball two. And so I will finish this ball of yarn on the body and then I will either do the neck band or one of the sleeves next. And my plan for the sleeves is to pick up the stitches. So my, my gauge is like spot on for this using the recommended needles, which is a 3.25. So I will then like pick up the stitches for the sleeve, see which sleeve, see which um, size my amount of stitches kind of is the equivalent to in the pattern and then probably knit that size. So yeah, that is how that's going. So I cast this on on May the 6th and so it's been on my needles for 28 days. But considering it's spent a good week with no work on it, I think I'm doing okay. Um, I would like to, I mean, I'm not really setting this as like a hard deadline, but my husband's birthday is at the end of this month. And so I would like to be able to gift it to him for that, but we shall see. I may run into some major issues down the line with my sizing. So I'm not putting a hard deadline on that. Okay, so that was whip number one. And whip number two is my totally rad ribbed socks, which is a pattern by Summer Lee. And I've said a million times before that I have been knitting these as a kind of like travel project, but they've also kind of become a little bit more of like my, I'm really tired and just sitting on the sofa knitting. So where was I last time? Okay, so I was here last time on the first sock and I have now obviously finished the first sock and started the second. So yeah, making some really good progress on these. I have been putting in markers every 10 rounds along them. And so that I can then essentially just knit this second one exactly the same as this one and just move the markers over once I've knit another 10 rounds. Um, I know the crazy sock lady does this and has a video on it somewhere, but yeah, that's essentially what I do. I just put in a marker every 10 rounds so that I can count however many rounds and then I just knit this one exactly the same. So yeah, um, I used the mini to do the toe on this one and I will be doing exactly the same on this one. And the yarn I'm using is um, the Lonely Knitters 7525 sock in the color of the Overlook Hotel. And yeah, I'm using a 2.25 millimeter needle, short circular, and yeah, I have tried these on and they do fit perfectly. So once I've finished this second sock, all I've got to do is just sew down the like folded cuff and then I'm good to go. And then this will, pay, this will be pair nine for the year. I'm like flying through my socks at the moment. Um, but yeah, this is size medium, so it's the second size. And yeah, just not really a huge amount to say, just kind of like carrying on with them really. Um, I'm into the ribbed portion on the second sock and I've got, um, what, 10, 10, 20, 30, 30 something rows, about 30 rows left of the ribbed portion before I can then do the heel flap and gusset. And yeah, just gonna, gonna keep going. I really like these. But yes, that is those. And so I cast those on on May the 12th and they've currently been on my they've currently been on my needles for 22 days. So those are my overlook hotel socks. And my next whip is a new cast on. I have definitely got my kind of like garment knitting mojo back and it's kind of come with a caveat of I want to knit through what I've got in stash at the moment. I have had a couple of yarns that I bought to make t-shirts and things last year that have been sat in my stash for now a year because I didn't get around to knitting them and then obviously it got too cold and I didn't want to knit t-shirts in the winter. So yes had a fair few of those lying around. And one of them is this San Sunday. 
And so I am knitting the pattern Thee by Casey Knitting Co, um, which is like a round yoked t-shirt pattern or like a cropped short sleeve sweater pattern um, in fingering weight yarn. And it's got like these broken stripes that you knit using intarsia in the round. So it's, very, it's a similar technique to the one that I used for yeah it's a similar technique to the one that I used for my daughter's unicorn sweater um, that I knit a couple of episodes ago and um, it's slightly different it's not exactly the same but obviously different designers are going to do it differently um, and so this is what I have got so far and it looks like nothing and I have not put it on the right needles to show this so I have done the all of the ribbing I've done the short rows and I'm into the intarsia portion on, and essentially this is just on one sleeve, like just on the shoulder and the sleeve on one side. Um, and so I'm knitting the first size in this and I'm using the recommended needles. And um, yeah, I think it's going really well. The pattern is a little bit fiddly to follow because essentially now that I have got through the short rows and I've done the first couple of increases, I'm also knit, so the, the intarsia portion is charted, but because it only essentially is like this portion of your shoulder, it, it's not charted the whole way across the round. It is just that portion and you, it does get you to put in markers for that portion. So you know exactly where it is when you get to it in the round, but you are also still increasing for the yoke. And so it's fine when you're just doing the chart portions, like the bits that are charted and just knitting like in the round without any increases, because then you can just have the bit of the pattern in front of you that has the chart on it. However, when you get to do the increases, you only have the section that the intarsia is on in the chart. So you have to then go back to the original page that the increases are written on. And then you have to, so you have to knit that point, that instruction until you get to the chart. And then you have to go back to the chart and knit the um, increase rates in the chart for that portion. And then you have to go back to the instructions for the rest of the round. So it's a little bit annoying having to go backwards and forwards, but it's not the end of the world. I think if you printed out the pattern, then it would be fine. Cause you could just have those two pages in front of you. I don't print my print print my patterns out I just have them up on my iPad so it does mean that like for those for those rounds where I am increasing I'm like having to scroll all the way back up to where the pages the the increases are on and then scroll all the way back down mid row to get back to the chart and then scroll all the way back up to get to where the rest of the, get to the rest of the increases which is a little bit annoying but I mean it's not for that much it I mean I don't know how, I can't remember how many more increases I've got left, but the, I don't have that much of the chart to knit either. So yeah, it's only for this very small portion. And then once you get through that, it's essentially just stocking it in the round and like small sleeves. So I don't really see this being on my needles for too long. Um, the pattern has you cast on using a tubular cast on and it's got kind of like a mock neck. So it talks you through starting on a straight needle a couple of sizes smaller than your ribbing needle to kind of make sure that it doesn't sort of wave too much and stays quite sort of not tight to the neck but doesn't sort of flare out and I think that has worked out really well um I only have straight wooden needles so that may have also helped to tighten up to tighten up my um tubular cast on but I think it looks so clean it's lovely and I can't wait to kind of see like what it looks like on. I've not tried this on yet. Um, my plan is to kind of like get through a little bit more of the chart and then try it on to see kind of where it's sitting on my shoulders. But yeah, I think I'm I'm like I'm really looking forward to this. It's quite a loose gauge. Yeah, so it's 22 stitches and 28 rounds in fingering weight yarn. So it is quite a loose gauge, but I think that means that it's gonna be a little bit more kind of like loose and airy. Um and yeah, I think it's going to be really nice for kind of like those cooler days in the spring, summer, like today, and um, also in the autumn as well. So the colours I'm using are Kit for my main colour, 
and then the stripes I'm using grey blue I believe um, it's left over from a an Oslo hat that I knit for my husband so I think it's grey blue but I'm not 100% sure I'm pretty sure it is um but yeah so that is that and it's a bit chaotic yarn wise because there are now three balls because of the intarsia you obviously have to have um a ball on either side of the stripes um to knit with and so yeah it's a bit chaotic when knitting but it's not if you're sitting down it's fine because you can kind of just have them on either side um but yeah it's just a bit chaotic getting it out of the bag um and setting yourself up but yeah it's another evening project and i don't know i'm quite happy oh dear I'm quite happy to um, finally be using up this yarn and um, using up this pattern which I also bought like a year ago um, with the intention of knitting up last summer and then just never did so I am very happy to be I've not put myself on a yarn ban but I'm very happy to kind of have accepted that I need to knit through some of these yarns and patterns that I've had in my kind of like mental queue for a while um, before I either buy or start anything newer um but yeah that is that and I cast it on on May the 30th so it's been on my needles for four days so far um so yeah that is my fee which I'm hope I'm saying right I can't really think of any other way to say it um but yeah so that is that. So whip number four is another pair of socks and these are my socks for the month of June in my year of socks and these are the Trompe Monde socks by Summer Lee and they are one of the patterns from the Sock Project which is her new book which has been out for a little while now but it's the first pattern that I am knitting from it and I am using Lang Jia Wool in the colours 184 and 109 and I'm half keeping this in my Marie clutch which I did actually use yesterday and realised that I can fit absolutely everything that I would need ever in this bag <laughs> like I had all of the stuff that I needed for the day plus some knitting and it was still wasn't it was still wasn't bulging but yes either way enough of that so this is 184 and this is 109 and I can't find anywhere that actually has names for these colours so they are just numbered but yeah this one is a lovely fuchsia pink and then this one is just more of like a ballerina pink and um, I'm using a 2.25 millimetre needle to knit these up and so currently they look like this let me get these tails out of the way there we go so yeah they look like this and yeah so there's a three by one rib at the top I decided to cast on and knit my rib on a two millimeter needle and then go up to a 2.25 for like the main body of the sock um like the leg because I find that if I knit my ribbing on the same needle then it tends to kind of like bulge at the top of the sock and they don't stay up very well so yeah went down a needle size for the ribbing which the pattern does not say um but I think I just knit my ribbing quite loose um so yeah I have tried these on and they do fit so I hopefully will not be having the same problem that I had with my last pair of socks but yeah so I have knit one two three four four and a half pattern repeats so I have like half a pattern repeat left before I will be starting the heel flap and gusset um I've decided to do this as kind of like a midi length sock not too long but also not a shorty and yeah so the pattern is like this lovely kind of slip stitch pattern and it's a really easy repeat to follow it's essentially like an eight round repeat but it's more of like a four round repeat but you change colors and then knit the same four rounds in the second color so yeah it's very very easy to memorize I don't really think I'm gonna need to look at the pattern too much to knit these um apart from obviously like doing the heel and things but yeah I've been thoroughly enjoying them um 
because it is just like a quite a simple pattern repeat I found myself going oh I'll just knit to the end of this pattern repeat and then go oh I'll just knit one more I'll just knit one more um so these have really sort of been flying off my needles um I decided to knit these magic loop because my small circulars are already in use and also I fancied a change and um yeah I think the colours look up really nice it kind of gives almost like a checkerboard kind of feel with the slip stitches and yeah I think they're going to be a really lovely addition to my sock drawer how many times am I going to say that this year um yeah I think that my so my stitches look a little bit uneven at the moment I feel like they always do when I'm doing this kind of like slip pattern um and then they should really even out in blocking as well but yeah um just going to be flying through these really I don't anticipate them taking too long because I am finding them quite addictive to knit so when you get down to the foot you are only doing the slip stitches on the top of the foot and then it's just stocking out on the bottom and they have a, fit, a heel flap and gusset and then just a usual kind of like wedge toe so yeah I will be doing the heel flap and gusset in the uh, 109 and then I will be doing the toe in the 109 as well because I don't have that much of this left um because I already used these this color in my little dot socks so yeah that is that is that I think these are just really fun um lovely a pair of like little pink socks and so I cast these on on June the 1st and they have currently been on my needles for two days so yeah very addictive in the fact that I've nearly done the whole leg in two days and I haven't really like put hours and hours of time into these I've kind of just been picking them up and doing a couple of rounds and then putting them down again so yes that is those and I think that's it actually that's all I've got like progress wise to show this week I hope you've all had a lovely week um I hope you have a lovely a lovely week going forward um and thank you very much for kind of like hanging out with me whilst I waffle on about my knitting as always if you have enjoyed this video then please do give it a like if you fancy kind of catching up with me on a more regular basis then um feel free to subscribe and you can hit the bell to be notified when I upload a video but I do upload every Thursday between sort of 5 and 6 p.m gmt or bst whichever we're in and yeah so i will catch up with you all next week happy making mm -hmm.